Fear Not, Episode 78. Hi, I'm Billy Atwell, and I believe that consistently facing your fears is the only way to realize your truest self and to make those confident choices that will help you to obtain your deepest held hopes and dreams. I have faith that this podcast series will show you that you are not alone, that it will strengthen you and give you courage to face your fears, and that it will help you to permanently cross over into a life of living beyond your fears. Join me on this journey as we listen and learn from others as they share their experiences in facing and overcoming their own fears. Hello, everybody. Today, you and I are going to be joined by Joanna Zeiger. Hello, Joanna. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, the pleasure's all mine. Are you ready to fear not today? I am definitely ready to fear not. Joanna has competed as a professional triathlete from 1998 to 2010. She placed fourth in the Sydney Olympics and was the 2008 Ironman 70.3 world champion. She's excelled at all three distances in the sport of triathlon, winning races in the Olympic, half Ironman, and the Ironman distances. She's an Olympic trials qualifier in the marathon, the triathlon, and swimming. She's won 15 Ironman 70.3 races, two Ironman events, and was the ITU World Championship bronze medalist. Her book, The Champion Mindset, An Athlete's Guide to Mental Toughness, was just published this last February. Joanna, can you take a few moments to fill in the gaps and maybe also give us an additional brief glimpse of your personal life? Sure. Uh, in addition to my life as an athlete, I have a PhD from Johns Hopkins in genetic epidemiology. And that uh, background that I have as both an athlete and a researcher and as a coach are the experiences that I use to write my book, The Champion's Mindset. The main catalyst for the book was a bike accident that I sustained in 2009 defending my world championship title. I was at an aid station grabbing a water bottle and the person did not let go of the water bottle and I crashed on my bike and I broke my collarbone and did some severe damage to my rib cage. I've had six surgeries to fix structural problems. I'm actually having a seventh surgery in April and I have permanent nerve damage to my intercostal nerves. And so the challenges that I met uh, as an athlete who is now dealing with chronic pain were very profound. And I, and a lot of the mental toughness cues that I use in the athlete are the things I used uh, to get through this injury. And I put all of those things into this book to help other athletes improve their mental toughness. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Joanna, would you also share with us today one of the biggest fears that you've had to face? I'd say the biggest fear I've had to face is directly related to my bike accident, which is why I share that story. And I came off the life of a, a professional athlete, uh, an athlete since the age of seven, and my body always did what I told it to do. It, it performed at a high level for a long time. I raced all over the globe. I was in the Olympics. I was a world champion. And now all of a sudden, my body was battered and would not do the things I asked it to do. I, I couldn't train at the same level, couldn't race at the same level. I was facing daily chronic pain that was affecting my ability to work and to sleep and to do some things. And so I would say the biggest fear that I still face today is, am I going to be a chronic pain patient forever? And how is that going to affect my life as I get older? So what have you done to, to face that fear? I've done a lot of things to face the fear. I have an academic background where I've done a lot of research in the medical field. So I've become an expert on my condition. Understanding what it is that you're going to face helps you plan for that. In addition, it's a difficult, I have a condition called intercostal neuralgia. That is uh, nerve damage in my intercostal nerves. It's very uncommon. And so I wanted to learn all about the potential treatments, uh, whether they were surgical or more conservative. I want to understand what other patients go through with this diagnosis. I've, I've just read everything that there is to know so that I really can be an advocate for my own treatment. The other thing that I've done is I've maintained as active a lifestyle as, active a lifestyle as possible. 
as I mentioned, I've been a lifelong athlete. And even though my ability to train and race and do the activities I love are severely curtailed, I still make sure I do something every day. So the main activity that I can do is running, but I can't always run. And so if I can't run, I'll go for a walk. And I try to find joy in the things that I can do rather than frustration in the things that I can't do. And I've really taken to heart a lot of the topics that I've talked about in my book, The Champion Mindset, things like positive self-talk or visualization or finding joy or just motivation, setting goals. All of the things that I used to be a successful athlete, I am now using to navigate my way through being a chronic pain patient. Would you say that that's also the way that you approach any fear? Just It seems like you do a lot of research and obviously there's a lot of discipline involved from your athletic days. You know, it's interesting. I don't know that prior to this that I've had specific fears. I've probably had things that have made me nervous, whether it was defending my dissertation when I was getting my PhD or towing me a line at the Olympics or even when I was lining up for the world championship race where I knew I had a shot to win, those are all things that could instill fear, but I don't think I was fearful. I, I, was, I had a healthy dose of nervousness that you would expect, but I also knew I was very prepared. I knew I had the tools in my arsenal to beat whatever was thrown in my way, and I've had a lot of ups and downs in my academic career and my athletic career, but nothing really gave me fear in the way that this circumstance with my injury has given me fear. Has there been any, because you, you're, you're very unique in your story, um, and maybe that comes from your athletic training for, for so long, but have there been other sources of resources that you've implemented into your life to, to help you, you know, especially maybe dealing with your current situation that you might be able to share with us that we can in, in turn using our own lives to face fear? Sure. I think that one of the most fortunate things I have in my corner is a great support system. I've got an incredibly caring and understanding husband who has really helped me on days where I've just been incapacitated and I can't move. And he's just words of kindness have really helped me through that and understanding and the negative thoughts that I sometimes have. He'll talk through that with me. I have my family my, my parents, my sister, um, I have brought together a team of physical therapists, and massage therapists, and uh, surgeons and pain doctors. So I talk about in my book, team building, and team building is imperative, whether it's in business or with athletics, and in this case, trying to navigate a health problem, that if you can amass a team that's in your corner, each person having a unique uh, attribute, to move you forward, it's, it's really very helpful because social support in a situation when you can really feel very lonely, when people may not understand because they haven't been through it, can, can really go a long way toward maintaining a positive mindset. The, the other thing is just really trying to stay positive. I don't really believe in regret. Sure, we've all made mistakes in our life and we would like to maybe change things, and people always say to me, gosh, don't you wish you could just, you know, go back to that moment and make it different? And that's a ridiculous line of thinking because I can't go back and change it. And to think otherwise that, gee, what if, that's very dangerous in terms of maintaining a positive attitude. So I rarely look back on that day with, gee, what could I have done differently? Because that moment has passed. And so I really look forward to how can I make, like, how can I make my life better day by day? And, you know, what new advances are coming out or what activities or movements can I do to improve my situation? So rather than look back with regret or sadness, I look forward with hope and positivity. Are you ready for the speed round? Sure thing. What individual, whether they be fiction or real, has made the most impact on your life? You know, I think that's an interesting question. And this probably goes back to my... Uh, talk about team building, I don't really know that there's ever been one person who has single-handedly made this impact. I've been lucky throughout my life to be surrounded by very knowledgeable and forthcoming people. And so I think my life has been shaped by the comments and the direction of, of the people around me forever. 
and I don't think I could really turn to one person. I think it's just the accumulation of the knowledge I've gained from so many great people. And if you could instantly change one thing in the world, what's that change going to be? Well, this is going to sound really cliche. All I can think about is Andrew Bullock talking about making fun of world peace. But it's true. We do need to get along better. And right now there is just so much strife, whether it's internationally or domestically. I really wish we could find common ground and just show more kindness to one another. What's your biggest weakness? My biggest weakness is that I can be too hard on myself. And I really try to work on that as I navigate through my health challenges. For example, when I was training and racing at my peak, if I had to miss the workout, I would really feel very guilty about it and I'd beat myself up. And I just had a a very, very rigid outlook toward my schedule. And when you have health challenges, you realize that you can't be rigid because you just don't know day by day how you're gonna feel So I've become a lot more flexible and have eased up on myself quite a bit. What's your biggest strength? My biggest strength is that I just don't give up. I will not leave stone unturned. And if you could only have one book to read, what's that book going to be? I think if I only had one book to read, I would go back to one of my all-time favorites. and, And the movie itself is also a favorite of mine, and that would be The Princess Bride. I absolutely love that book. It is filled with amazing characters and great humor. And in my life, when I have any kind of sadness or frustration, I like to go back to humor, and go back to things I've read or watched that make me laugh. And I would have to say the book, The Princess Bride, which many people haven't read. They see the movie, but the book itself is maybe even better. It, it's, it's comforting, and it just makes me feel good. And do you have a favorite sound? I like the drums. It has just a, it's a pleasing sound to me. And Joanna, if someone would like to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? They can connect with me on my website, racereadycoaching.com. There's a contact page there. Or they can email me directly at joanna at racereadycoaching.com. And what parting advice would you like to leave with us today? Parting advice is get active. I don't know the necessary demographics of your listeners, but I recommend exercise for anybody, whether it's walking or running or getting in a group situation. Endorphins are a powerful tool. They can help you get through just about anything. So if you are thinking about an exercise program or if you're lagging on your exercise, just get up off the couch and go do something. That's excellent advice, and thank you so much for sharing. And I want to let everyone know, too, that Joanna has generously donated a copy of her book, The Champion Mindset. So if you'd like an opportunity to win that book, visit the giveaways page at livingbeyondyourfears.com today to submit your free interform. Joanna, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and just sharing your story and just being a real inspiration. And thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, you cannot achieve everything, but you do have the God-given ability to achieve anything. So stay focused, out of fear, and keep on keeping on. Until next time, be well and peaceful. For more information on today's episode and guest, or for resources that will assist you in overcoming your fears, visit livingbeyondyourfears.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast, where three times a week we move to a life beyond our fears.